Okay, so a uh, very warm welcome to all our esteemed panelists and the audience who's watching us right now. Um, let me do a quick round of introduction. First, uh, I think uh, I'm Pritha Nagpal and uh, I'm VP Sales at Jobs for Her. I've uh, been with this organization for seven and a half years now, part of the core team. Uh, and I think uh, before we have uh, introduction of all our panelists here, I would just, you know, give you uh, a brief about, you know, the roundtable discussions. And I think we're here today to discuss on the topic, which is what to keep in mind while you're building a successful career in technology. Uh, so here we have our industry leaders uh, who will be talking, I mean, talking about this topic. Uh, wherein about the opportunities, about the growth prospects and the future of women in technology in corporate India. So let's find out how you can navigate your career by using current trends to upskill and rise up the ranks. Uh, at the table, we have Ajay Krishna Kutti, Head of Talent Acquisition, Siemens Heldeneers, uh, Jyotsna Malotra, PGM HR, TVS Motors Company, Margata Wali N. Palebu, Senior Director, Head of Engineering Business Service Center, Westart, Pallavi Gochi, Talent Acquisition Leader, Asia Pacific, Japan and China for Cisco, Rajini Anantaraman, Director of Resource Solutions, Sapna Pandit, Senior Manager, Software Engineering, Epsilon, Sharmila Sentil Raja, Director at SAP India Limited. Uh, I think before we start the discussion, uh, we would love for our audience to type in the questions and the comments in the chat sections. And we'll take them up while we are having the conversation. Okay. Um, so um, I think Pallavi, do you want to go first? How does a woman who aspires a career in technology deal with unconscious bias that she faces at home and in workplace? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Prita. And uh, thank you, uh, audience, for joining us today. Uh, so uh, I think... Uh, unconscious bias or inequality in workplace didn't happen overnight and won't be diminished without an effort. There needs to be, um, in my perspective, deliberate and conscious action to make this change. And this is the work that each one of us has to continue. I think we all have to be the change that we want to see around us. And with that, uh, two things I would like to recommend for our audience. First one would be making people aware of their biased behavior is a good strategy. And it's bringing the unconscious to the conscious, right? It's all about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, which simply means that you are not really uh, uh, taking these as uh, challenges and not letting them derail you or your goals. So be the light for yourself and inspiration from others. That would be my first one. Uh, the second one would be uh, find allies and be an ally wherever you can. Uh, your friends, your mentors, your coaches, your sponsors are very important for all of us. And little more important when we are trying to advance in an environment which is not fully ready, not fully favorable, and thus the rules of success for women in that space is not written yet. So, uh, so I think these are the two uh, uh, recommendations or advice that I can give to our audience. Having said that, I do think uh, a lot has changed in the recent times, and we can uh, seek a lot of confidence and stay hopeful about the positive changes that are happening in this phase. I think uh, a lot of companies like Cisco and the likes are embracing 
inclusion and diversity as a concept, as a philosophy. Uh, although I do acknowledge that there is a lot more that needs to happen in this space. Thanks, Pallavi. Sharmila, would you like to add? Thank you, Preetha. And thank you for uh, this invitation. And this is a subject which is quite close to my heart as to how do women you know, manage and maintain and grow their careers, especially in the IT world. Um, so question on bias. I think I would like to begin first with, you know, our own bias. We inherently, internally come with our own bias. I can do this. This is not for me. Oh, I've never done this. So these are very deep societal conditioning biases we put for ourselves. Uh, it really would be great if many of us, either through a self-reflection or through external help, try to understand what are our own biases. And then, of course, there is the bias of parental and, you know, the core inner circle, the so-called uh, family, friends, neighbors. Many of them say, okay, you're going to travel out on a project. You're going to leave your kids here alone. Now, that one statement sometimes can really derail our decision process. So how do we co-opt other women or other colleagues or other friends who give us strength and say, yes, this is your career and your uh, family is important too? And how, therefore, do we quieten these voices which are other otherwise? And when I come to workplace biases, now bias is not just gender. I feel bias is also about experience. So when someone who's never done a delivery role, if they want to take up something like that, there is an immediate bias in the hiring manager's mind. She's never done delivery before. Or she's just been a consulting profile. She is not suitable for sales and she is not suitable for customers because she's got a personality which is quiet. So there is a personality bias. So things go beyond just gender in the office space. And I think we have to be cognizant of that. And once we become aware, then it becomes easy for us to work around these bias. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, and I've noticed a lot of, you know, the reels popping up, you know, no men have been asked you know, uh, you're going on a project and who's going to take care of the child, right? So uh, we, of course, seeing, you know, biases, we all have it and how we are overcoming that. I think, um, Ajay, it'd be good to hear your perspective here. Thank you, Pita. Thanks, everyone. Um, and just to give you a background, I had the recruitment for health years and uh, um, agreeing with everybody's uh, view in terms of that and especially, Shamila, what you mentioned, right, in terms of uh, quietening the voice of people who are, kind of like coming or rather opposing these views or kind of putting these biases in picture. Uh, one important thing is um, tr it starts from the family, right? Um, educating our kids in terms of especially uh, uh, our girl child in terms of what are the bias that they would be actually kind of facing in the life ahead. So once you are conscious about the bias that you're going to be facing, it becomes a little more easier for you, for you to kind of uh, respond accordingly and maybe kind of voice against that. And most importantly, um, what um, Pallavi mentioned that being an ally is very critical. Some of us are very strong in terms of voicing out our views, some may not. So uh, it always stands for um, standing for somebody who is weaker than us so that we are not letting the others also face. And that is applicable for both men and women. Doesn't mean that only a woman can stand against a woman when they are actually kind of getting biased at work or at outside, right? The last point is, um, in terms of choosing the right employer too, right? Currently, we all know organizations which are very inclusive in nature. Uh, do a little bit of background, especially when you're job hopping or maybe planning to kind of change your career or even starting your career, right? It becomes very important for all of us to kind of check for organizations which are standing for diversity and inclusion in both theory and practice. That's very, very critical. And it's not a very difficult thing. Uh, look at the right places in terms of social media to kind of hear the voices which are out there opinions which are being mattered because that all automatically helps us in choosing the right place to work to. Great. Thanks, Ajay. Uh, Maggie, do you want to add to it? Absolutely. Good afternoon, everybody. And thanks for the invitation uh, to you, Preeta, and also to the Jobs for Her family, right? 
two points. Um, everybody spoke about the inner voices and what exactly can we do for us to even get conditioned from a childhood stage. What do we do for our next generation? What I would like to touch upon is what can I do as a leader? I'm a women leader and there are also other leaders. What we do in Vestas is talk about stereotypes openly. Have a dialogue around it. Don't go back and you know contour it in one side and say that this is not something that we would like to talk about. Be open about it. Like what Pallavi was saying, the first step is to go back and demystify the whole thing around this bias. Open dialogues and create an environment where people are okay to come forward and talk about it, right? One thing that I would like to quote, there was a study done by Harvard and this survey was taken across a thousand different employees in the US. Now, what came out as a stark difference is that 9.2% of the employees actually said that they perceived bias in one way, shape or the form. And uh, in that particular survey, what was also concluded is that if you have a certain population, 10%, 9.2 is close to 10%, right? 10% of the population actually can create a leakage in the market, which is significant enough, which could actually create a leakage of about 450 billion to 550 billion every year in the US economy. So it's, it's not just one thing. It actually adds up to a lot. And it also impacts to the culture of the company it also impacts the bottom line of the company it also uh, impacts the biggest thing which people is the asset for every other company it impacts that part of it as well so we need to be cognizant as leaders one to talk about it two also to encourage people when they see that something has been perceived very differently be vocal uh, be acknowledging of the fact that there could be something that could go wrong and also treat to it, right? So we all grow together when we talk about it and don't don't create these uh, stereotypes amongst the leaders as well. So that's my uh, viewpoint, Rita. Thanks, Maggie. Um, Jyotsa, would you like to add? Sure, Rita. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, see, I think a lot has been said, but I think... Uh, what is most important is even in spite of becoming a professional, a technological leader, a technology leader, how much this balance of personal and professional front is actually happening. Are you still having a control on the financial decisions of your family? That's where a question we need to ask ourselves as women. How much are we contributing to towards making those financial decisions. Are we contributing towards it? We are contributing financially def definitely, but the decision-making part, is it still lying with somebody else? So please, this is a wake up call for all of us. Unconscious bias is a balance. It's a balance where we identify our own biases, the biases of the society and strike a balance through bringing in more inclusion where we change the ecosystem in building the culture where we can address various micro behaviors, which corporates are already working towards. Various organizations have taken severe actions in the DNI space. Many of them have joined uh, uh, ESG goals. They have signed, their CEOs have signed, their chairmen have signed. So it's in line, but at their personal front, are they coming forward to make those decisions? Are they coming forward to you know, take up that step on in financial decisions at the personal front also? That is going to bring a big change. Because, you know, the society respects those who are able to bring in and build in towards growth and stability at the family as well as professional front both. So that's my uh, say on this, you know, the financial front plays a very important role. And definitely creating allies for yourself within the organization, uh, having network, good network. A lot of times I've also seen on the bias front, women bias against women is also a very strong front which we should be addressing at some point of time. As women, we have to build a camaraderie amongst ourselves where we can support each other rather than, you know, trying to look at other person as a competition. So that's one more front on bias that we need to address. And definitely micro behaviors is something at uh, TVS we uh, run every leader in the organization through, showing them videos, taking them through specific uh, scripts where they can actually relate to the cases and talk about various micro behaviors that are actually experienced by employees and shared during various focus group discussions. So that's my take on, uh, on the subject of bias. And definitely it's there at internal, inside ourselves also, which needs to be addressed. That's true, actually. 
Uh, Rachi, would you like to add? Yeah, thanks, Preeta. Thanks for uh, letting me join today's session. Uh, it's, I think there are two levels to it, right? One, uh, I, I absolutely agree with everybody on the table here in terms of we being allies to uh, ensure that, you know, we're very open and transparent in our communication with people back at home and uh, our interviewers probably, right? Uh, I think most importantly, one with ourselves, you know? <laughs> I think that's that's where we try to be by naturally uh, women are multitaskers and it comes very, very naturally to them. Yeah? And that somewhere eats up the space, whether it's a mind space or the physical space, it does eat up. I think one thing I've learned over the last couple of decades is definitely we need to learn to let go of many, many, we need to even outsource even I'm back at home, right? So if that gives that level of uh, space or time for women to be able to use that time to upskill themselves or even get into a space where, you know, they can have that mind space with open conversations, that's one. And uh, two, of course, choosing the right employer. That definitely is the most important step in today's world. On the other side of the table, I can definitely tell as an employer, uh, you know, the first thing somebody from TA would ask anybody in the business is, I think I always prefer to ask a very, very specified and a targeted question to the hiring manager as to what was the specific feedback that you wouldn't get heard in. That sometimes takes back the hiring manager and they're not if they're not able to put a finger on, uh, on a particular feedback, that on that constantly is a, is is a big open statement for me. So yeah, I think these are the big things that uh, that call out for me. That's actually interesting to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Sapna. Hey. Uh, thanks, Preeta, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just listening to everyone, uh, it has added to uh, my own understanding of how people see this as well. But to me personally, uh, see if there's a problem, uh, to solve the problem, we must all acknowledge that the problem exists, right? So uh, same is the case with unbiased, um, uh, sorry, um, uh, unconscious bias. Most of us do not know that we have this bias. Uh, we are all humans. We all have it, each one of us, even here in this forum. Um, just, just take very simple examples. Now, Jyotsna gave the example of taking care of financials. Very, very good, very apt. But I'm taking a step back and seeing the basic things that we do at our home, right? We women are, uh, we consider ourselves responsible for putting the food on the table, taking care of food, taking care of lunch boxes, putting the breakfast on time, right? So we have grown up with this idea in our heads that, hey, I'm, I have to ensure that my kitchen is running, up and running, and family members get their meal on time. So we never question that, that, hey, can someone else in the house do this? Can my spouse do it, right? Can my father do it, right? So we take it upon ourselves. Uh, to, you know, kind of enforce this bias. I'm not saying it's wrong. Someone who's fond of cooking, running a kitchen should be doing it, but just to expect women to do it, is it right, right? Similarly, you know, we may not have this, uh, you know, we may not have heard this from childhood, but many a times, many things come up in the form of humor or jokes. We hear so many jokes about women being bad drivers, right? Does it mean that only women are responsible for accidents that happen on road? No. So many men, probably if you just see the number of road accidents, it would be mostly male drivers. But just because some women was behind the wheels when the accident took place, that becomes a joke. Hey, that was a woman driving, right? So again, that's a bias that none of us realize, but many times we laugh at such jokes and we contribute to, you know, growing that bias. So somewhere probably we ourselves um, should um, pause and see, is this a bias, right? Is this right? And uh, I mean, that's that's outside your workplace, that's society in general, that's how it is, right? Um, when it comes to workplace, yes, we should be educated enough, we should be knowledgeable enough to uh, see where there is bias, right? Am I the one who's creating it? Am I biased in, you know, adding to it, right? For example, I as a leader, when I have to go out station for a hiring drive and I want to hire people for my team from another city. Um, do I have, does my list of panels have enough number of male and female employees? Am I 
you know subconsciously picking more of male employees because i know they would be okay to travel and they would be okay if the you know if the recruitment drive goes on till say 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the evening right am i um, subconsciously uh, you know overseeing someone a very competent female employee but i know she has a small baby to take care of at home so i may not reach out to her just making the assumption myself so those are some of the things you know that happen in a workplace and and even in workplace you notice a uh, leader uh, if it's a you know this this i have noticed happens many places if um, if it's a male leader who's who's uh, who's keen on actions who wants to drive things you know people use terms like hey he's so passionate he's so ambitious he's a go getter right but similarly when you see a female leader doing it the terms like hey she's bossy right so uh, you know uh, that that's again um, uh, probably are bias playing into those kind of things so first thing i would suggest to fix this is to acknowledge it exists and learn to identify you know how how it all is there around us we may not be able to solve all of it but if we consciously start noticing it and take those small steps to correct them we would be in a much better place so that's my take on it yeah um uh, i think we all carry some unconscious bias uh and also very ingrained the way each of us have been brought up also right um what we see at home what we see at workplaces some things that we adapt the actual charts are different than the corner coffee sh- coffee charts in the office spaces so i think it's very important to walk the talk yeah uh great uh some really interesting points and views coming out um i think i'll move to the next questions uh how can women use power of technology to upskill and grow alongside their male counterparts um sapna we'll start with you uh you're on mute the most used word on the my apologies uh so basically um yes uh, how can you use technology to upskill but prior to that we must understand you know what upskilling means right why is it important one very obvious reason is it improves our performance it enables us to explore the pathways uh, to new skills um, uh, to different roles in our career basically for you know career progress progression um it also empowers us to master our current roles you know even before we talk of moving to the next role we have to be master of the current role we are playing so upskilling is super important right um, it it basically you know it's not just learning something to do quickly it's it, it's also about elevating your thinking right you need to learn how to think how to act how to thrive in an ever changing world right so a few years ago Uh, till the last decade you know education was was um, restricted to schools and universities and once people finished their education and left for employees they never re- never really went back to the universities but today the technology landscape has changed so much uh, i mean learning is on the go uh, there are so many edtech companies there are so many platforms um, you know technology has made all that possible uh, that you could be a student anytime anywhere um i am aware of you know a friend of mine who was who was working in it full time she had a household to take care of but she did her executive mba and uh, i used to wonder how she does it all and i once asked her hey how do you find time in your day to you know upskill yourself so much how do you take up uh, you know uh, such kind of a course and she gave me tips hey see i i, I spend one hour a day commuting to work i take a taxi and in that one hour i just go through the video the recording of the lessons that were done last week or some you know online content i use that time right so technology is there in front of you uh, uh, many organization like epsilon they have made they have uh, made it a goal for each employee to spend certain number of days in a year to upskill themselves it's the training goal for everyone in the company um, you know that enables us to you know think through is hey i need to spend this much time to upskill myself i need to improve this you know um, aspect of my role so that's you know creating a platform and uh, we must always keep in mind that you know this new century 21st century is no longer about you know the labor based economy 
everything is knowledge driven it's skill oriented um, and it you know it means that uh, workplaces are also becoming increasingly hybrid specialized talents are in high demand so use the technology and uh, just just take the next uh, leap in your career that's all thanks sapna um rajni would you like to add yeah thanks um i think i some of good points that you brought up i definitely feel a part of it is related to the previous question yes in terms of our obligation is just as actually just yesterday i was having this debate with somebody at home this so much uh, of our education uh, if you see the trend of our 10th and 12th pass out you know obviously the quality of um, results is so much higher in girls versus boys whereas that kind of really gets leaner as it gets as many many women uh, you know choose to go outside of stem once they come into stem i think upskilling of it uh, is in two parts one under- the home understanding environment for them to be able to upskill themselves they need to it and two from the employer side the opportunity given equal pay is an absolute big player in it uh, obviously if there is an equal amount of uh, attention uh, especially on compensation is given for men and women in the uh, technology industry it becomes a lot more easier and becomes competitive uh, very very organically for women to be able to help upskill themselves how they going to do it yes today i think it's become a lot more easier uh, putting themselves into a lot of online courses can be a huge advantage for them yeah i think uh, that definitely plays a huge role for them and at home back home it goes back to the previous question that level of understanding and that level of uh, being able to manage home versus work helps them to upskill it thanks uh maggie would you like to add yep i think uh, ranjini you brought about uh, quite an important point right when you see the the kids passing out in their 10th or their 12th it's it's this big and as it progresses into the stem modules uh, later in the school or probably in university it kind of thins down from there uh, i worked for vestas and i had the engineering team over there and uh, i'm i'm quite proud to say a couple of things right technology is not as complex as what's been perceived that's one thing and related to the previous question and i i see sharmila is also nodding her head and she is heading uh, the team in sap and i can clearly say a lot of us don't think about the outcome at least women the women that i have come across and the viewpoint that i have is that we think that it is super complex we actually have to start thinking about the outcome uh, technology is simply in two words can we do the day to day work more efficiently and more effectively with the use of technology simply put this is exactly what is technology use your day to day logic to convert daily work into a smarter way of working efficient way of working this is all is technology and if you want to use some algorithms around it if you want to do different things around it that's clearly technology right how many of us knew and i was a kid uh, who passed out from uh, school in 1998 and uh, how many of us would have thought that blackberry was a big gadget back in those days right uh, we thought that accessing emails was super cool and today how many of us could think that we could do anything and everything practically from our handheld device right so that's exactly exponential growth of technology that we have seen in the last couple of decades and the other thing is that stem as an area um india is possibly one of those biggest markets where we produce stem graduates we occupy 37.2% of the global stem graduates that we produce as well and we also are the market where we have the third top globally driven unicorn market which means many of the startups that come from here and gladly so there are a lot of women who are coming up that particular global index as well so i'm super excited for that particular space the one thought that i will leave with is technology is not complicated and upskilling in technology like what sapna was saying right it could be a cab drive away it could be just that 10 minutes we have so many different platforms today where we can upskill ourselves you don't have to necessarily go with a certificate to prove that you're knowledgeable right um, learning is one thing knowledge is another thing so as long as you're able to go back and uh, 
understand a certain concept and go back and simplistically, you know, simplistically go back and explain a certain algorithm, you are already a winner. So just gain for that simplicity or ask for that particular simplicity and a logical explanation around technology, and then you're already there. Thank you, Maggie. Um, I completely agree with you. I think I would want to hear Ajay's perspective here. I think he's adding to the diversity here, so it's good. <laughs> I think good to be on the minority population for today, Prita. Thanks so much for that. Uh, so a couple of things, actually. One, women are already blessed with something that men don't have. We are not very good at sitting and studying, right? So learning, it's a lot more easier when it comes to women. And um, we are fortunately or unfortunately in a domain, especially if you look at technology or STEM, right? It keeps changing all the time. Evolution is a part of our business. And when anything that comes with Frequent evolution automatically means you have to keep upgrading yourself, right? Um, so you have to think from two aspects. Um, though women have the greater power to learn, which automatically reflects in the initial parts of our exam, like the, all of you mentioned, that right? when you look at the 10th grade or the 12th grade exam results, which come out, always women are the highest toppers over there or maybe the best performers over there. Uh, it automatically is linked to the aspect of actually learning. But you, especially from a women population, you have one more upgrade to do yourself, especially when a lot of women take the family base and you have to take a break and then come back to the career, right? So there are there are two points where logically that automatically becomes a gap in the learning process because of many other aspects. And uh, um, if you look at 10 years back, um, learning would have been a lot more classroom driven, like we would have to go somewhere or we have to be physically present somewhere to kind of get a upgrade on what we have learned. Um, and you know that in technology, if you're out of touch with even with one year, um, the versions have changed, things have drastically been completely changed. Uh, cloud actually changes all the time. So there are a lot of things which are happening over there. So automatically, you have to keep uh, going to places to learn and it's become a little more easier. Um, and also learning is a personality trait. Uh, in a lot of our organizations, we don't push anybody to learn. Right? We give them pathways to learn. Uh, almost every of our organizations would have great places where they can log in and pick up any knowledge they want. But uh, how many people really do that? And that's a question that we have to ask ourselves. So going back to sharpening your saw, that's a uh, critical aspect of our lives. It's a trait that we have to kind of keep pushing ourselves. We would have a lot of our daily work to do, but uh, we have to figure out time for ourselves to kind of keep upgrading ourselves. So uh, that's something that we have to keep uh, reminding ourselves to kind of upgrade and learn and develop um, unless we do that we'll always be behind either whether it is man or women doesn't matter in the current technology era unless you are technologically or competent in terms of your domain areas we are always pushed second right so um, there is no two way to that um, keep learning keep looking for opportunity to learn um, there are so many free ways of learning these days even if you are not working in an organization you always can go to a youtube great place for information, right? You think about anything, it's already there. So, uh, um, and uh, keep in mind to spend money. That's another thing that you have to keep uh, as a, so what if, we know that all of us keep, as Indians, we are programmed to save our money, um, but some of our savings, we have to keep pushing into learning also. That's another key aspect that we have to do. Uh, that investment is a good investment, uh, maybe a greater return than a SIP or a Bitcoin, if you think about that, but um, that's something that we have to definitely keep investing in terms of pushing our little bit of money into um, getting knowledge from outside, which has to be paid for. Back to you, Prita. That's, that's great, Ajay. <laughs> it's a better investment uh, that any of us can invest within ourselves. And I think pandemic also helped us do that. You know, the whole perspective changed for people. Yeah. Uh, Sharmila, would you like to add? Thanks, Preeta. Yes, I would definitely agree with you. The pandemic made a huge amount of change simply because it brought learning out there at our fingertips. So much of content which was in classrooms is now digitally available. And Maggie, you did see me nodding when you were saying it's not complex because I am not an engineering graduate. I am basically a science graduate. And uh, for the first 12 years of my career, I was nowhere in an IT company. I was a businesswoman. I used to open, plan, design, and run stores. So I have an experience in retail business. 
However, technology is formed for what? It is to help these businesses. So you have a domain understanding in a specific industry, a specific domain. Definitely technology is the place because that's what is helping these businesses grow. So in that way, I would say that STEM as called, you know, in India, they say you're a science graduate or you're a commerce graduate or you're an art graduate. There is already a tag attached to you. Today's world is not like that. You may have done engineering, you may have done BSc, but the world is not looking at your degree. They're looking at the skill sets that you are bringing. Many large organizations, be it the IBMs, the Facebooks of the world, they say you have the relevant sets of experience, the right skills, we are ready to hire you. It's a gig economy. And when it is such an economy, technology is changing at such a pace. Three months, you're no longer using a specific technology. R is the thing of the past. Python is what everybody is using. Or you were in a project which was using, say, dot .bit. You suddenly have been put in a project where it's a different technology. So I think what is really needed is a plan. Anything that is planned gets executed. So question is, do you have a plan? Do you have a plan for yourself? As to the next five years, four years, what is it that you want to do? Then comes the question of skilling. Now, the skilling can be both upskilling, that you are in a specific technology. You are probably in the .NET technology platform. You want to do a full stack. You want to understand uh, Angular, JS, or probably you want to become completely an expert in that area. That's upskilling. These kind of things you can do while you're working here. Large companies give you a career path, a learning path. They have learning hubs and portals where you can get free anything. Go on to GitHub and with your peers, you can network and you can learn. But that's the plan you need to put in place. What are you learning? And the other thing is reskilling. If you want to completely look at something new, and this I did, I went back to university. And when Somebody announced that data is the next new oil. I said, fine, I need to do something in analytics. So I did a one year course. I sat, I mean, sacrificed all my weekends, my evenings, and I reskilled myself and gotten into a completely new service area from retail technology to advanced analytics and AI, because that's what is growing. So always be on the lookout for what's that next skill which is growing. You have to keep looking around the corner. What's new? What's happening is that in the path of my career, therefore, how do I get, uh, you know, upskilled in that? And if it's needed, and I like to agree with Ajay, invest in yourself. If that means you have to ask for a sabbatical, go and do that one year MBA course, do it. Even if you are 10 years, 15 years into your careers, I would say do it. It will jumpstart your career. Sharmila, our audience will be really, really inspired how you've transitioned from a retail technology to where you are. And, you know, when you're investing in yourself and you're learning, it really shows through, right? Um, I think, um, Pallavi, we'd just like to hear from you as well. I think uh, I'm so inspired with everything that uh, we have heard so far on this uh, question, but I'll, uh, I would uh, add uh, my perspective. So, I think uh, <clears throat> the role that technology plays today uh, in the world of education or skill development has never been stronger or more relevant, more important than uh, before, right? And I think this is something that the pandemic in the last two years has made all of us uh, realize. So on one side, uh, we have how we can look at leveraging technology. And on the other, I think we already heard about that uh, as well. Uh, we need to also appreciate how the increasing trend in remote working option, the more flexibility in terms of how work is delivered and actually the definition of workplace itself has gone through a massive change, right? And most importantly, to the advantage of women. So uh, we all know that uh, in, in our society, women uh, invariably take uh, a more active role, uh, say in terms of caregiving or in parenting. So remote working options, hybrid work model uh, now 
opens many possibilities uh, for them, right? So how do we capitalize those opportunities at the current moment? So uh, I think we already heard that uh, generally women perceive technology as complex, but that's not true. So can we look at leaning into technology to help us stay relevant? Uh, to reskill our skills, to upskill our skills. I'm not getting deeper into some of these areas. I think a lot has been uh, spoken there. So as far as using technology is concerned, I think uh, we need to change our mindset a little bit and uh, aspire to have more access to technology, make an effort to be tech savvy so that we are using it to the maximum extent and intentionally make it a source of continuous learning for us. There's so much available in terms of e-learning platforms, learning on the go. So in short, I think technology could be the breakthrough that uh, women need uh, to enabling them to be more prepared in terms of what's expected in workplace or for a role that they may be looking for uh, in the mainstream of workforce. So, so that's uh, my take, Prita. Thanks, Pallavi. Jyotna. Thanks, Prita. Uh, I fully agree with most of you what you are saying, but only one element that I wish to add is, um, see, we do a lot in terms of encouraging women in the organization. But do women at certain point in their life really have that aspiration is my question. So when we are talking about aspects of upskilling, we are talking about aspects of looking for job opportunities, uh, within or outside the organization or upskilling through uh, internal job or internal assignments here and there, are women really open? At some point of time, I get a feeling that women need to do an introspection within in themselves. And as Sharmila said, come up with a plan. If you have a plan, it will get executed. If you really want to do something or become something in technology, you will have opportunities. There is ample amount of opportunity available today in comparison to any time before. Universities are going online. All institutions are online. Even, even the companies have big budgets to invest in employees. But how many of them are really coming forward? So especially for second career women, uh, yes, they take up you know, a step forward in coming forward and start upskilling and applying. But those who are within the organization at certain point of time, we have seen that, yes, they are there, but are they really taking on putting themselves forward for any challenging assignment? So I, I think that's one more aspect for us to look within ourselves uh, from that point of view. But yes, as far as the opportunities for upskilling goes, yes, there are endless opportunities today. Uh, LinkedIn Learning, we have partnered with Pathways is there. There are certain opportunities we never imagined will be available. International universities offering everything online. So um, there's endless scope. We really need to step up ourselves. Thanks, Preetha. Thanks, Jyotna. Yeah, I think uh, now there's another kind of competition, <laughs> upskilling and actually updating your LinkedIn about it. Yeah. So uh, I'll move to the next question. Um, Jyotsa, we'll start with you. Uh, a large part of female population who are graduates opt for a different career stream because of lack of opportunities. Um, what is the future of young tech women in our country and what corporate India can do to enable them to grow? Sure, Pita. What I think is this is a golden window. If you look within India and globally, this is a golden window where tech startup, startups are at its peak. And as I think uh, Maggie also mentioned that we form majority of the unicorn within you know, the, the global setup. So considering all those aspects, I think this is a golden window of opportunity for any diverse talent to uh, you know, come up in this space and even explore the way uh, uh, Sharmila had done, the way various other, uh, you know, uh, youngsters are trying to explore. Many of them joined into business planning, but are today trying to get into technical spaces like data analytics and various other streams. So this is an opportunity where uh, future of young tech aspirants is very, very golden window. And as uh, one of us already mentioned that COVID has put in a common play field where a lot of flexible opportunities are available, where uh, everybody's 
seen on the basis of what they contribute to the project, what they bring to the project over and above the face time, which was a big consideration in the older, you know, in the, in the pre-COVID era. At the same time, if you look at what corporates are doing in India today, uh, in terms of enabling growth, I see majority of them have signed up on sustainability and equal opportunities, where flexible policies, flexibility, uh, reasonable accommodation to majority extent, which we cannot, we could not have imagined in the past, like um, uh, offering logistics support, offering work from home, offering fully work from home, offering uh, uh, hourly work from home, offering uh, work from home in the time window you want to work, tie up with the manager whenever you want meeting, meetings can be organized in that time window. These kind of flexibilities were never available before. And this is what, what Corporate India is doing today. Many organizations are actually following it in the window of sustainability where in the bigger eco space, d and plays a very important role. An inclusion from uh, driven from top leadership, inclusion driven by ensuring managers are sensitized, teams are sensitized when any diverse candidate is brought on board, is playing a very, very important role in ensuring that we don't only bring them into the system, we provide them with an ecosystem where they not only exist, but grow as well. So that's my take on how organizations are contributing today. Great, thanks, Jyotsna. Uh, Sapna, would you like to add? Yeah, so um, what I think is, you know, there's no dearth of opportunities uh, for people in STEM roles, be it, you know, women or men, there are plenty of opportunities out there. It's, you know, I go with the sentiment that was ex expressed earlier, it's uh, women who limit themselves. It's as if we are stopping ourselves from applying to a new job somewhere. We are stopping ourselves from saying, hey, this means I may have to work in shifts or at odd hours, so that will be too difficult. I cannot manage it, right? So we stop ourselves and we stop experimenting. So opportunities are there. Now, I, I do not think we need another reservation to say, hey, we need to reserve these many jobs for women. No, that's, that's not the right thing to do. We are capable, we are skilled. It's just that we have to be ambitious that, hey, I want to do this and I'll do whatever it takes to do that. If it means I have 16 hour days, yes, I'll put in 16 hour days for the you know duration required. If it means I have to take additional support from family, friends, my work network, my colleagues, say hey, I'll reach out to them, I'll collaborate with my peers and you know get things done. I want to drive this project, I will do whatever it takes to drive this project, right? So this passion has to come from within. That's that's what is coming in, you know, when we, um, I mean, it's again, repeating myself, not the lack of opportunities, but we stopping ourselves from taking those opportunities. Um, see, what can corporates do? Just like Jyotsna said, corporates are doing a lot already. Um, even in my organization, Epsilon, there, is, there are so many D&I initiatives. I am part of one of those D&I initiatives. Um, there, is, there are so many conferences, there are so many roundtable discussions within that, that uh, go on. They talk about, you know, what do we do to increase our diverse talent? And diversity is not about women hiring alone. It's about getting people from different kinds of uh, universities, different kinds of degrees, different kinds of, you know, cultural backgrounds. So diversity is a big topic. So, uh, so corporation uh, corporates are uh, putting in conscious effort and a lot of effort to ensure you know there are uh, the opportunities go out to everyone. Um, what they could do, few things. I mean, so right now there's a lot of flexibility in terms of you know where from where you work and at what times you work, right? So even in my company, no one questions if I log in at eight o'clock and I take a two-hour break in the afternoon and I log in later in the evening. So that flexibility is available to me. Uh, I can work from anywhere. I can go to the office. So the office is kept open for employees that want to come to the office and work. But those who want to stay remote and they are more productive there, it's it's totally okay. People can work from home as well. Uh, so uh, one thing probably we could try doing it in future is not just in the hours, but also the flexible days. So if someone wants to work on Sundays, but take Wednesdays off, that should be okay to probably something that organizations could actually, uh, you know, uh, start thinking about too, but uh, the flexibility is only increasing these days. And we also see so many big organizations, you know, they want to um, 
is a life for a working woman there are child care centers within the company premises or in close proximity so where women employees are you know encouraged that hey you don't have to travel extra you you make use of this facility you could go and visit your child during the working hours in the middle of the day right um, there are companies that provide additional transport facilities uh, i have been part of one of the organizations where women who had to carry their baby to the child care were given a different transport uh, you know so those are the kind of things that corporates are doing already and uh, uh, right now we ourselves i mean uh, we em- em- women employees are not just women everyone is asked what else do you think we should do differently to ensure we get more women into the workspace so yes opportunity is all around and everyone is uh, putting their best uh, efforts to ensure we get you know more women into our work our workplace and and help them grow right we are trying to identify the strengths the the women them, themselves did not know that they had so that's that's where it is today thanks apna uh, maggie would you like to add absolutely a uh, topic very close to my heart so i have four points uh, on this one first of all to start off i don't know if we have realized as a country right uh, uh, preeta i think everybody alluded to that i'm just going to call out if you speak to any of the octogenarians uh, that are there in your family anybody that you meet right innovation only came from two countries back in those days one was japan one was germany and today we're no more the consumers of the technologies we're actually the innovators so india is taking the stage to the next level we're becoming the innovators everybody on this call in one way or another is contributing to that particular one now the second part of we being in that innovation club or making sure that india goes into the innovation uh, you know kind of a mindset and putting us on the stage is that we are also creating those many number of opportunities on the stem part of it just a factual number right in 2020 the number of stem graduates that came out from the country we had risen the number of stem openings in the country by 44% it's just that having an engineering degree or a stem degree does not get you a role you also need to go back and upskill yourself and map yourself like what uh, sapna was saying right it it's just that we actually short change ourselves as women or even as men that we probably fit into that particular profile or we don't we have to go back and upskill ourselves just getting a college degree does not get you a job or land you a job you just need to fit into that particular role and there are a lot of personal aspects as well that we need to go and upskill for uh, there is another astounding data that has come out from the national science foundation in india what it says is that 80% of the future jobs in the coming decade will be related to math and science skills which means india is a workplace we need to go back and adapt our work uh, people to go back and get into that particular culture so you might be a commerce graduate it really doesn't matter but there should be a certain amount of math skill and science skill for us to shine anywhere and i think all of that we spoke about the upskilling part of it is also chiming along with this particular agenda now there is this is about looking at it from an outside perspective right what does it mean in vestas what does it mean for me at vestas where the company that i work i'm super proud with this particular company because of two different things right one dni is not just a language we have this is must win battle and then there are about six clear must win battle or the priority that we have set for ourselves and for us one of the priority is having a diverse and include uh, you know inclusive work environment and we also have made sure that we have put an agenda for ourselves saying by 2025 we need to have capable women in our leadership team and that should be around 25% it could mean a target of 25% but what we are talking about is getting there as a workplace and we're all committed to it it's not that and jotsna was talking about it at the first point right it's a, it's not about just men encouraging women it's also the women population encouraging the other women colleagues as well last but not the least i think sharmila you and i are sailing on the same boat i did my masters in medical microbiology so nowhere close to engineering and then i thought i should upskill myself then i did my uh, mba in uh, customer relationship management has nothing to do with the job that i do right now but i do drive about uh, 600 different folks here in india uh, who are all engineers uh, potentially so a lot of them are engineers 
we also make an equal opportunity at Vestas by, you know, kind of making an incubation uh, sort of a workplace where we go to colleges, we get graduate engineering trainees as well. We upskill them. It's not just they upskilling themselves as, as the, we're the leading technology provider in the wind industry. So we have a commitment for ourselves that we need to give back to the community. We need to give back to the society. So we, we get these people into our organization, we upskill them for the future. We upskill them for the next couple of years, and then they continue the relationship with us. So it's quite passionate as a subject for us in this organization and personally for me as well. Uh, so for me, we are a great contributor. And I think the one line that I would say is, we are democratizing this particular STEM environment and we need to continue to do that as a country and uh, I think as a community as well. Back to you, Preeta. Wow, Maggie, that's really awesome. And I love the word. Uh, what is that? Must win battles. Must win battles, yes. Nice. That's really good to know. <laughs> and Thank I you. think personally, I think uh, uh, I think even the audience, I'm sure, uh, there's so much to learn uh, from the panelists here. Really, really amazing you know, inputs from all of you. I think, uh, Sharmila, would you like to add here? Um, thanks, Rita. So when I read this question, it said that a large part of the female population who are STEM graduates opt for a different career stream because of the lack of opportunity. So I just wanted to uh, say that uh, certainly there is no lack of opportunities in the STEM field. Uh, and I'd like to again, you know, recall Maggie's uh, fact around that, that 80% of future jobs are going to be in the STEM field. Uh, now, therefore, the question is, if we have so many engineers who are women who are passing out of our engineering graduate, I mean, uh, colleges, why are they not coming into the work stream? I think that is an important question for us to understand. And we have done, uh, India as a nation has done extremely great strides, I mean, taken great strides in, and progress in ensuring that women are getting graduated. The at the educational level, I think the parity has been achieved. Equal number of women and men are graduating out of our colleges. But how many of them then spill over into jobs? I think we've done a lot of good work in the last one or two decades, certainly in the tech field, where today I think any large organization worth its salt who has a DNI programming, 30% of the entry level jobs are women. What happens after that is they fall away. And the reason for that, more than probably it could be 50% what's happening in their workplaces, lack of opportunities or biases. But it is also we need to acknowledge that phase in a woman's life where things beyond herself happen to her. She gets married, she has children, there are responsibilities, her life changes from being single and the darling of her parents to someone who needs to take responsibility for others. Um, so I know I'm going in a slightly different tack than you know, what the question was about, which was availability of STEM jobs. But then we know that there is an availability of STEM jobs, but why are no women taking that? I think we really need to look at things beyond the workplace also sometimes. How are we changing the popular narration that it's okay for a woman to have a career as well as a family. So then if it is okay, what are corporates doing to make it okay for her? So there are a lot of new and innovative solutions that's happening now. Women are able to travel. They, as many companies have ensured that many travel allowances have been given along with them for them to take their children along, uh, bringing them back or what is called as the returning program. They have created that. There are so many other programs now, for example, parental leave, uh, granting extra parental leave for care. So many of these uh, efforts are being done by corporate India, but I think a lot more also needs to be done by the society in India to make it okay for a woman to have a career. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and, and sometimes we also stop ourselves to go to the next level or limit ourselves. And sometimes as leaders also, you see, you know, there are people who really push you to the next level. 
or taking up that challenge and i think a uh, lot of other countries and lot of other businesses are still more evolved we are still getting there and there's a lot of work that needs to be done uh i think ajay uh, we would like to hear from you why uh, thanks pita i think i had the similar reaction like shamla when i heard this question pita because as a ta leader um i am not finding enough uh, competent stem female graduates in the market so uh, it's not a dearth of jobs it's more of quality of talent which may be available in the market right and it all um, goes back into our education system uh, just to put things into uh, perspective india is also the largest manufacturer of engineers in the world right so we actually kind of have around 15 lakh in- new engineering graduates coming out into the market every year and all of us actually know that only two out of the 10 people are actually employable from a quality standpoint of you so few things to keep in mind one if you are a parent with a girl child uh, putting them into stem education choose the right college to uh, put the kid into that's very important because it all starts from there if you are competent there is a job there is no question about not having a job second is uh, again i wish all the parents were on the call also today because this is more of an advice for them um the second is actually being open uh, there are jobs out there in the world like or inside india right um a lot of our colleges are in tier 2 and 3 3 cities especially when it comes to engineering and uh, especially when you go to and a lot of our leaders when you go to uh, conduct an interview in these colleges uh, a lot of girl kids especially during the interview process say that i have option of only going to only one city and not beyond that right so it's about uh, being flexible in terms of uh, like any or do entering a career or starting your job Uh, you should be a lot flexible that's a key to success um, don't restrict yourself in picking up any cities don't restrict yourself in picking up shifts if you want to kind of be inside the job so and it's a lot is family restrictive stuff it's not that the kids are not open for that it's mostly the family kind of imposing that my girl child should not be going to another city for a job right so now um, it has to start from there uh, but again um, jobs are there absolutely no doubt if you look at um, siemens health engineers Uh, our graduate program is all 50 50 percentage uh, if there are 200 jobs out there 100 are reserved for men 100 are reserved for women and if you get more women we are more than happy to kind of take them so um, we, corporates have strong and stringent policies to kind of make sure that we have enough and more jobs for women it's just that uh, the competency is key and if you relate back to the earlier question right it about how you are actually kind of um, learning the right skills for the industry so um in your if you are in a college making sure that uh, if you want to get into the right for example you may be aspiring to be a coder maybe in one of the technologies how you are going to be learning that along with your curriculum by maybe partnering with the right um online courses or maybe even a couple of with your friends or your campus itself right um a lot of our most of our as who are seated on the call also would have campus programs which are even diversifying flying into campus where we are going there and sending our people to be teaching the kids over there right so there is there's a lot of give back that the corporates are doing but um, it's about we honestly we are not getting the right talent in the last two year, year, years it has been even more difficult it has been a fight for talent uh, but to, to answer short there is no shortage of jobs for graduates especially in the stem for women so if you have If you're any any of you are on the call, and if you think you've not got a job, reach out to us. I'm pretty sure we'll find an opening for you. Ah, uh, thanks, Ajay. Um, so, uh, is there like, are you trying to also just to add to it? Are you also trying to do something to bridge that kind of gap? Yes, Prita. So, um, is I'll talk more from my company perspective, Prita. We have a couple of um, memorandum of memorandum of understanding with a couple of campuses in across India, where um, we have um, even faculty enhancement programs which are running. So, basically, we actually kind of send our people to their campuses, or some of their faculty come to our campuses to learn new technologies or maybe upskill their technology. We send our people to campuses to teach the kids in terms of. apart from the curriculum um if we have enough power we sometimes change their, change their curriculums to to kind of like look at what we are looking at from a hiring standpoint of you so i'm pretty sure it's not just siemens health engineers a lot of our companies are all doing yeah. the same thing yeah yeah uh, that's what i was coming to because i've also heard a lot of companies are getting involved uh with schools and campuses and curating a particular curriculum you know so that these people are actually job ready yeah 
Uh, Rajni, would you like to add? Yeah, thanks, Preeta. I think it's such an interesting topic, right? Uh, all of us, hands down, would say there's absolutely no dearth of opportunity, and especially us, the TA folks, uh, like Ajay said, we absolutely, you know, the last two years has given us a whole different perspective of fund of talent. So there is, there is no dearth of uh, requirements. But what we can do as corporates, I can speak for the fact that for, uh, you know, as an organization, I'd have present uh, resource solutions. So we do a lot... Um, Corporate organizations, when they do, when they keep a diversity target, uh, like, you know, many of them, like how Maggie said, you know, there was the must-haves of 25% or, uh, you know, 35% of the diversity target. That is the great starting point for our, all of us. A lot of initiatives start after that. Uh, you know, we do a lot of hackathons for organizations, for huge multinational organizations where, you know, women do have an opportunity for them to uh, showcase their uh, talent. Hackathons is a brilliant way for us to explore what comes out of it and uh, i think more of because for younger aspirants uh, definitely mentorship programs absolutely help uh, the, you know if they find a network of mentors uh, that is a space for them to help understand how is that that you know they can accelerate in technology so those are the two takeaways for me uh, that stand out great Thanks. Uh, I think we had a question uh, from the audience. Um, is it possible in real life for a woman coming back to work after a career break uh, without any age barrier? Rajni, would you like to address that? Yeah, absolutely. Now it's, uh, it's the most, it's the best thing, right? Uh, where we welcome back new moms. So we welcome back moms. There are very curated programs in um, large corporate organizations. And uh, how we welcome back, especially with technology, is still tied back to upskilling. If we are able to help, uh, we also put them into training programs, certification programs, where the new moms come back and they go through new, the latest technology um, uh, trainings. And the, what comes out on the other side of it is a huge win for moms. So there is absolutely space for all of us uh, to ensure as corporates to bring that opportunity and for aspirants who can come back, there is definitely opportunity. Uh, others, would you like to add? Yeah, hi Prita, I raised my hand. So I just want to add no. that uh, even at TVS, we have a program called Unnati. So the overall agenda of Unnati program is to look at second career for women, irrespective of whatever reason they have left the organization or any organization from any role. If they are willing to come back, we are willing to look at them from whatever opportunities we can create for them. We don't go by set roles which are available in the organization. We go by what kind of projects can you deliver? So our team actually work towards it in ensuring that we can curate some projects through which they can contribute. There are opportunities for them to have upskilling based on the interactions that they have with the uh, TA team. At the same time, there's also opportunity for them to have mentoring and coaching because they're coming after such a long gap. Some of them have had five years gap, seven years gap. It's very difficult to suddenly come into an office space after such a big gap. So we have a, 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 a certified coach on board who will come for a weekly session and will do in batches so that their experiential learning also contributes. They are, for, a, for example, a group of five, six of them have undergone a similar experience of being away from work and suddenly coming back. So the experiential learning that they might be having in terms of the inhibitions that they face, in terms of interactions with their manager, in terms of interaction with their teams might be very similar. And from, through the coach, they can actually get some insights on how to approach a subject how to approach a subject of not available at 2, a, 2 p.m. in the afternoon for a meeting because my kid is sleeping at that time and I cannot take a call. Maybe when he goes for a play at 3.30 or 4 o'clock, I can take a call with you. So these kind of dialogues are actually happening between the coach and the ladies who are uh, you know, rejoining these sessions. So these are the opportunities available for them through Unnati program. And definitely in terms of flexibility, I think most of the organizations are offering their best gig kind of projects, anything they want. I mean, uh, the, the organizations are fully open to working from home or as the individual desires. So it's at a different level altogether. Thank you. 
Yeah, I would also like to add uh, something that we do at Cisco as a, um, we practice at Cisco as a hiring methodology. <clears throat> uh, we call it skill-based assessment. So they are the first online tests for candidates to start their Cisco hiring journey without any human scanning experience, which then eliminates completely everything that is your background, your age, your gender information, your educational qualification and everything else, right? So they are uh, designated to measure the knowledge, skills and the judgment that is required for certain competencies in a given role, typically uh, something that is blend with the power of AI uh, with the science of psychometrics. So, uh, you know, very uh, proud to uh, share. We have hired more than 12,000 candidates through this uh, skill based assessment approach uh, this year. Uh, and the other aspect we also mandate is to have a diverse interview panel and that not necessarily uh, mean gender diverse, but a panel which represents different sort of diversity that we may have uh, present uh, in a region, in a location and stuff like that to assess a candidate in a fair, objective and bias-free uh, approach. So uh, I, I think uh, going back to the question, uh, we eliminate all of these things right at the beginning of the process and hence, you know, what we are focusing on is your skill and the capability that you bring to the table versus what's required for the role. And uh, I would like to add my thoughts too. Even from Epsilon, we have been running a program called She Rises, which is targeted to uh, get these women back into the workforce who had uh, taken a career break from for some reason. So I myself, I'm, an, I'm a manager here. I had two of such women join my team last year. And I was so happy to see how enthusiastic they were, how excited they were to get back to work. And, and they still had so much thirst to learn new things. They, uh, the women were wonderful and they've, they've been reaching new heights. Um, uh, for, uh, in addition to what Jyotsna said, what we also consciously did was to ensure them they have a buddy within the team that they could reach out to throughout for the first one year. Um, we also ensured that they were given uh, appropriate work assignments. So we totally understood that they may have been, um, you know, uh, they, they may have worked on a particular technology before taking a break five years ago. So they may not know the latest thing that that's happening on that technology. So we gave them enough time to learn uh, only when they were ready to, you know, uh, start delivering on project where they assign projects and, you know, real deliveries. Otherwise, we were, uh, they were supported throughout. And uh, today they are in, in less than a year, they're as good as any other candidate that we hire from market or from any other company. So it, it's totally okay to attempt to get back to work. And uh, I'm sure most of us, most of these companies provide all the support that one needs uh, to be successful again in the second stint. And Preeta, just to add on to that, right? Um, if you look at the fundamental issue, it's about a lot of companies hiring with the experience bracket for their roles, right? Um, in Siemens, actually, we don't use that. We actually kind of use something very unique called grip where people are hired on competency, not based on experience. If that fundamental issue is taken care of, uh, that issue of like whether you're taking a break and coming back to work never plays an aspect, whether it is a man or a woman, right? So... Um, a lot of organizations are slowly moving into that where the role is actually based on competency, not based on experience. If you look at a lot of our job descriptions from a lot of companies these days, you will find descriptions mentioning, I need a software developer, which is four to five years experience in nature, right? Which is, again, fundamentally wrong for four to five years. A person who maybe just one year can maybe be equally competent from a competency standpoint of you for, for doing that role. So, uh, we at Health in years, we actually follow that grip philosophy where any role is predominantly based, purely based on the competency. And like what uh, Pallabi is mentioning, our hiring, especially on tech, is purely uh, blind resumes where we take them through our uh, tech assessments first before we put them across the next level of screening. Uh, age is never asked at any point in time. The only time we look at age is, are they close to the retirement, which is very, very rare in nature because that adds up to the complexity of hiring, especially when, when people are very close to the retirement age, then we have to kind of take them through a separate 
hiring methodology or maybe their compensation philosophy is slightly different right so um, as long as we are actually kind of eliminating the entire um, experience based um, titles then we actually kind of resolve this issue automatically wow that's that's really 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 interesting and i think uh, something for a lot of us to learn and also depends a lot on the kind of organization you are and the structure that you are into and uh, also the top down approach also so it depends a lot on that as well but really 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 good initiatives uh, and something for us to even think um, you know as a platform which is jobs for all you know the different kind of initiatives all of us uh, all of you are doing and how we can also work with you guys and how we can make it also better so a good food of thought for all of us as well and i'm sure our audience is really really superbly excited and inspired to hear all of you i'll take just one last question uh, would anyone want to like to add to the previous one okay um so um the last question is how important it is to build a network of like minded professionals in order to grow uh you know your career in technology yeah anyone wants to go first can i go for that prita yeah sure ajay okay um, i am going to be tarnishing recruiters now so for, forgive me in the beginning itself so if you are applying for a job remember that there are hundreds of application uh, high probability that your application is not going to be touched so I, a lot of the jobs in the industry are predominantly going via networking um that's a standard practice it's either employee referrals or refer or direct references which are getting and definitely the head heading part also right is what the recruitment community is thriving on right now so if you think you are applying for a job and if you are getting a call um, then your stars are good take a lottery immediately that's going to be working very well for you but um networking is very key because one is the i'm talking purely from a job change standpoint of you getting the right opportunities but networking with the right set of people to kind of making sure that you are in the right competency spaces you are getting the right advice in terms of growth of your career so mentoring is a key part of all of our all of us are here because we would have had a couple of good mentors in our life um otherwise we'll be all in some other place and not being a part of this call i guess preeta so that we might might take from a recruitment standpoint of you thanks ajay i would like to hear from the others preeta i will share from my own experience so i have uh, moved careers like crazy i have moved from services i served as a short service commission officer to corporate and after that moved within uh, international geographies um, taken career breaks so i'm on a, i i want to add on to what ajay said is identify what you really want to do and from there on identify the person and some of the key stakeholders who make a difference who are the opinion makers in the organization and reach out to them and thank god there is linkedin what better you could have asked for and all my jobs across geographies kazakhstan singapore back in bangalore everywhere i got through linkedin i reached out to people i showed my resume i asked them for help and luckily they were helpful enough to offer me opportunities and at least have first level interactions with me so that's where it begins you have to identify the people who can help you and support you and then start building your network around it and there are various other platforms also like jobs for her is one such platform and similarly various other platforms available in today's world where techies are coming together and you know becoming part of hackathons uh there are various opportunities in today's world you can definitely explore through that and definitely we lived in we live in india i and engineers are the highest so scope is really brief if you are going to depend only on applications thanks joseph uh maggie um so two points to what josna was talking about linkedin is uh, one of my favorite platform as well and it's not just the networking platform part of it there are also some free courses when you actually join into those uh, you know there are like ted talks that happens there are also some symposiums that gets held on linkedin if you were to be a part of the areas of interest that one might have then they will meet some like minded people as well 
And then there are also some certain apps. I'm not going to go back and prescribe a list of apps. But if you go into your app store, you, you yourself can find out those apps. There are some apps which are particularly curated for you to locally connect within your city or within your state, uh, within India and outside of India as well, right? Uh, if you want to look at like-minded engineers, if you're if you're into development, if you're into programming, if you want to get into a certain kind of like-minded people network, then you have it. Or if you just want to go back and do it for health or for other, other aspects, right? Like mindfulness, there are other things that you can actually do. What Josna said was spot on. And what Ajay was saying, I think he's just demystifying the whole thing about the hiring part of it. Network really plays well. And knowing what you want, knowing the next step, we're not saying, you know, it used to be a cliched question sometime back. What do you want to do in the next five years? Nobody, I, I don't think any of the recruiters on the call uh, do ask that question nowadays, right? It's just knowing the next step. Know who you want to connect with and make an attempt and you will never know. That will open up a lot of doors for all of us. So that's the way that I will prescribe to this as well, Trita. Thanks, Maggie. Sharmila, would you like to add? Thanks, Trita. So I have a slightly different take on network. Network is not just for you to get your next job. Network should be an embedded character within yourself. Um, and is it important? Yes. Absolutely, top priority. And it's not a matter of skill. It's a matter of effort. You have to put in effort to get networked. You have to go and connect on LinkedIn. Once you connect, you have to start the conversation. And there are low touch conversations and high touch conversations. And you need to build the relationship. Network is not about just connecting and okay, forgetting about it. You have to build the relationship and it has to be a give and take. So if you're networking with somebody in your industry, you could collaborate, you could probably get certain questions answered, you could probably provide a collaborative input on, you could just go ahead and say, let's do a point of view together. And the other point I'd like to put together is it's not PC. You have to do it continuously. It has to become second nature for you. Okay, so you're not, you know, you're not happy with your current job. You want to look out. That's not the point. That's not the time to do networking. The best place to do networking is go back to your old bosses and your old colleagues. And don't go back to them only when you need a job. Go back to them to find out how they've been doing, what's happening in the industry, how their company is doing. So it has to become a nature, a character, build, build that muscle within. And then the last point I'd like to add is it's not, networking is not one dimensional. You need to build pools of network. As a working woman, you already have 10,000 things going for you, you're juggling. So you should have a network of friends. You should have a network of, uh, you know, um, people that you can, uh, fall back on for support. You should have a network of, of course, your colleagues. So think about network as a more holistic, more rounded and 360 degree ongoing effort. Wow. That's actually so true. <laughs> uh, and the way you put it, I don't know about the audience here, but I'm really going to network with uh, the panelists here for sure, the whole 360 degree, and really want to be connected. And honestly, I think the kind of conversations we have at the roundtable discussions or the breakfast clubs or even at our leadership club, really meeting the like-minded people and also getting that kind of support really helps. And going through certain phases in life, whether it's professional or personal. Yeah, uh, 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 Rajni, yeah, Malavi, yeah. would you like to add? <laughs> yeah, that was spot on, Preeta. I mean, I absolutely love the way she said it. It's a two-way street. Yeah, I think uh, it, it, we, we remember the, all the networks only at the time when there is a problem at the current job or when there is a job hunt. I think that 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 absolutely should change. Network should become very, very organic. The moment it becomes more organic, you start to foster that network uh, for professional guidance. And, you know, very, very important also because uh, probably at some point it becomes very, very mundane. 
in a certain field, you do not know what's happening in the outside world from a technology perspective. What are the new technologies? What are the new learning? What, what could be a new method to it? And today, you know, people are speaking up, uh, you know, for a very, very long time, people were very, very conservative about it. People were like, you know, my, my role, my job is very, very limited and I don't want to speak up to it. You know, either it is because of from a space of insecurity or from a space of, you know, confidentiality. I think those lines are graying and as adults, we are very, very clear. We know where the distinction is and being able to have the, you know, even to sit alongside a competitor on the table is the most beautiful thing of, you know, of networking. You know, that's, you know, even last week as competitors, four or five uh, of us were sitting on the same table and we were able to have a very, very healthy conversation over coffee. That is the level of networking that we all should get comfortable outside our comfort zone. And that gives us new perspectives uh, into what the opportunities are in the future, what is the opportunity that, you know, we have to give in into the society and also, you know, within our workspace. So you know, network is absolutely important. And I think fostering network will take us a long way along. Yeah, I think I, I, I'd just like to add to absolutely agree with everything everyone said about networking. Uh, uh, in my opinion, um, as part of that networking, we should also probably be intentional about having three key people which we will have to, uh, which we need to uh, identify and work with and to help uh, move upwards along the career ladder uh, in terms of improving our skills, abilities whilst doing so. And these three are, uh, one is your coach, mentor and sponsor. So uh, I think we can look at these individuals to surround uh, ourselves with that will provide us an opportunity to learn from their experience bounce our ideas and thoughts and help uh, hold a mirror up for ourselves to uh, really actioning on our self-development. I think uh, it helps us uh, being deliberate and focusing on uh, who we allow to have influence on us to take uh, better control of our career goals. And I have uh, personally gained so much from my mentors. I think at each step of my significant, uh, uh, I, I would say, milestones of my profession. When I look back, I think it was influenced by uh, one of these three. So, so I do think uh, being able to identify as part of your network, uh, I think these three key roles uh, make a huge difference. And uh, even at Cisco, I, I probably would like to call out a program that we call Multiplier Effect. Effect which is uh, a pledge that uh, we all take with our personal commitment to uplift at least one person, either within the organization or outside, and uh, take their career to an advanced uh, stage. And we encourage our peers to also do so. So I think uh, uh, it also aligns to the vision to drive growth and innovation by taking uh, bold actions and increase the pipeline and create opportunities for extraordinary diverse uh, talents. So just wanted to add that uh, bit of my perspective as well. Thanks, Sapna. <laughs> yeah, uh, just in a minute, I agree with each one of uh, uh, the speakers. Uh, the only thing I want to add is um, don't limit, I mean, don't think that you have to build connections outside think within to where, where your current job is at. build network outside your own team see what an upstream team is doing, what another business unit is doing in your team. Look at the big picture, see what, look at the system you are building and see what other teams are building. If you are trying to use technology A, someone is you building with technology B, when you network with them, you understand how you measure the impact and you learn more. And networking at work makes the job a lot more fun. You will be less stressful. You will um, know whom to reach out to if you're stuck on a problem, right? Outside your team to your team would not know probably, but maybe someone you have been seeing at lunch, meeting at lunch in the cafeteria would help you to figure out the next immediate solution. So networking is, is really important and healthy at a workplace too. Thank you so much. Um, I mean, I don't want this to end, but we do have to end this. <laughs> Uh, but it was really great having all of you. And I'm sure 
you know the audience is super thrilled and really charged up to look out for coaches mentors and sponsors right here right uh, and obviously it will be good for people to connect with you through our platform through other social media platforms um and also it'd be really good to you know have take away these learnings introspect what you really want to do and really how you can grow your career so thank you all the panelists for this really amazing round table discussion uh i hope you all have a great day and hope to see you for the next sessions as well thank you thank you kita thank, thank you thank you everyone kita thank you everyone bye everyone